This is episode 189 of Super League Pod. We introduced a new feature this week, Move Aside Mark's Rants. We now have Sarah's Soapbox. Also expect more Leeds news and more Leeds lose. Get strapped in for stats, fan reviews and all the rest on your Rugby League podcast, the Super League Pod. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 189 of the Super League pod. I'm Mark, your regular host, and I'm joined this week by uh, Hull FC fan, Sarah McKenzie, better known as Scoots, to the wider listener group. How are you doing, Sarah? Are you okay? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Bit tired, but I'm all right. We were, uh, well, we keep doing this getting you on after uh, after a whole loss, so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sure that's an ideal preparation. Last time I saw you, Sarah, you were trying to break into a parking garage in Hull. Um, so <laughs> yeah. how have you been in the last few weeks? Yeah, we were trying to get, get into the 24 hour car park, weren't we? <laughs> how, how, how have things been going over in Hull? And is there any update on our, um, on our sponsored side, the Might and Warriors, this year? Well,. Uh, yeah, things are going well. They got their new kit on Saturday, so they'll have the first match in that this week. Excellent. Um, With SLP on the sleeve. SLP on the sleeves, yeah. They're very excited about new kit. Some of the lads did a sponsored walk yesterday across the Humber Bridge and back, um, and they did that wearing the new kit. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. So it's going well. That's excellent. Okay. Um I didn't write down what's coming up on the show, so I'll have to remember what we've got. We've got news that's going to start with Leeds talk again. So Leeds are making sure they dominate the news scene this week. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit in there as well about the Women's Challenge Cup semi-final draw because that wasn't done until sometime in the middle of the week. We're not really sure when. We've got the match reviews. We've got fan. Re- we haven't got a, a huge amount of fan re- reviews. And again, I think the World Cup's playing havoc. With uh, with people sending in fan reviews, there. But we've got a decent, we've got something on every game in Super League at least, and some of the Championship and League One games as well. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, quite a bit on the on the on Championship and League One. Uh, I've got a quiz for you that's centred around one of the big news stories from the last week, Sarah. So be prepared for that. I think it's quite an easy one. To, to, well, you it's not an easy one. It's, it's a fifty-fifty one. You can, you know, you can you can guess and still get full marks. Basically, okay. <laughs> doesn't rely on knowledge just much. So, oh, so that's good. Um, and yeah, I just want to start off though by reminding everyone about our free giveaway. Uh, that's still open. We've had a few entries in so far, but if you want to join the entry list to win a free signed copy of Gavin Willis's great book about the 1953 American All-Stars tour inside. It's called No Helmets Required. Uh, to be in a chance with winning this, you can simply send us the answer to this question. Send it on Twitter, Facebook, or by email. All you need to do is tell us which pro wrestler and actor is the cousin of Hull Kingston Rovers USARL International Junior Vivi. Send us your answers and the winner will be drawn later in July when Gavin Willisey joins us for an SLP short. And speaking of SLP shorts. I want to give a quick plug for the latest SLP short where I was joined by York City Next media manager Gavin Wilson to talk about the great successes they're having at the club this year, both on and off the field as they're developing their brand and uh, building their crowd and doing things all in the right way it seems uh, and would be a good example to lots of other clubs out there it feels like so make sure you get on and listen to that so it's quite a, it is a short short it's only 20 minutes or so long so um, a really easy one to fit into your day I would suspect okay that's all uh, that's all I've really got to shout out about Sarah um, yep. so I think move on pretty quickly to news from around the world of rugby league News now, sponsored by LittleWarden.com. If you have a website, then visit LittleWarden.com and see what they can do to help you. They can help you with domain expiration checks, redirects, and all sorts of other important background web stuff that they'll make simple for you. LittleWarden, monitoring the tedious. 
And we start, as we did last week, Sarah, with a big story from the Leeds Rhinos. And I must admit, it took me a little bit surprised that Kevin Sinfield has rejoined the Leeds Rhinos as their director of rugby in a significant structural change at the top of the club. James Lowe's has been appointed as the club's new first team coach, while Sinfield will oversee a number of roles that were previously performed by chief executive Gary Heverington, the ex-England captain who's 37, won seven Super League titles, two Challenge Cups and three World Club Challenges with, with Leeds as their captain. He spent 18 years at the club before crossing codes to play for the rugby union side Yorkshire Carnegie in 2016. Simfield and Lowe's will be at the helm until at least the end of the season when the situation will be reviewed. Um, Tim G got in touch. He said a couple of points on this. Firstly, so Jimmy Lowe's is the fall guy if it goes wrong, but Simfield takes the glory if it goes right. And secondly, bigger question for me is what happens at the RFL and the new Etihad super camp. If anybody left, we're the last one out to turn off the lights, please. Um, what did you think to this news? It was a big story. It broke on Thursday, uh, Friday morning, wasn't it? Yeah, whenever it broke, I was in school doing something, so... I was trying to follow it without really following it, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, I ha- I couldn't work out who they were going to get because it th- there just didn't seem to be any rumours prior to it, did there? On not to my nothing on terms of what in terms of what was going to happen for the rest of this year. There, there's still you know rumours for long term appointments yeah. in the head coach role. But you're right, yeah, it it, it wasn't really yeah the, the same as it as it should normally get where you. You know, Certainly Kevin Sinfield wasn't you. mentioned for a role around the first team playing setup. No. And, yeah, so it came as a bit of a shock, really. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what, you know, these roles previously performed by Gary Hetherington that Sinfield's going to take on will be. It seems to me that Sinfield's going to largely be responsible for things like recruitment and retention of players um, and overseeing of the overall playing side of things so as I understand it this year he's going to be in charge of the first team playing set up till the end of the season trying to get things back on track there trying to get the group working in the right direction and all, all working together and things like that and then as it goes on he's going to kind of more take over the the wider remit of all the playing side of the of the club whilst um, Gary Hevington obviously focuses more on getting the stadium up and running and the commercial side of things and and then there'll be a gradual handover through all of that to Sinfield is what I understand is kind of going to happen it's kind of like a long-term succession plan for Gary Heverington's role rather than Sinfield being the new coach as such but at the moment they need some positive news spin around that first team don't they yeah and Sinfield gives that to the fans he's an absolute hero and legend there um, and it kind of deflects a little bit. Do you think it was weird that Jimmy Lowe's wasn't even at the press conference to announce his appointment as the head coach of the Leeds Rhinos? <laughs> it, it it does seem it, doesn't it? Well, it feels a bit like um, Simfield's going to be this, uh, like the poster boy, isn't it? That's what he's actually going to be doing. No, exactly. And from the interviews I've heard and read and seen, it, it appears that he's going to be overseeing all of that, the first team stuff not necessarily doing the hands-on coaching, but certainly coming up with the strategies and the team selections and that sort of thing until the end of the season. And then I think he'll maybe take half a step up above that. Um, and they'll, I suspect that Jimmy Lowe's, unless he does a really good job and the fact the players really buy into him, um, I suspect he might not be there as the head coach next season. But it, it remains to be seen how good a job he does. He's One of the things Sinfield's talked up is Lowe's relationship with the other coaches around the set up, uh, Burrow and Chev Walker, and also the fact that he knows the group of players because he's been in and around them before. So, um, so it does seem that you know that if that goes well, Lowe's might get it long term, but I'm not sure that it's really the, the necessarily the plan as it stands. This other thing about Kevin Sinfield's role at the RFL, obviously that contract apparently only runs to the end of this year, um, and he's right. still going to be working one day a week for the RFL until the end of the year, which is a, a curious one. Do you, do you, do you think there's do you think that's going to destroy? Which role do you think is going to lose out the most? It's going to be the RFL role, isn't it? Surely, yeah. And we don't have any idea on who might replace him there. One of the obvious sort of things is Jamie Peacock kind of involved in the 
player management side of things with the England setup anyway, and that was a large part of Sinfield's role was, as I understand it, organising the different playing groups under the England banner. So possibly there's a replacement there in, in Jamie Peacock. I'm not really sure. I don't think Hulk KR fans are really sure what he does at Rovers. So No, no. Although they can't argue it, it, with the player recruitment of the uh, of the last few weeks, I suppose, and we'll get on to some more of that later on. Maybe um, maybe it's Gary Hetherington's way of getting his finger into another pie of the RFL. Do you think that's what he's trying to I, I, I can't... I think... I can't see that being the case... Um, if I'm honest, but, but it does help. It does help that the it does help them retain some sort of connection there by bringing in someone who is in a pretty, you know, growing role in the uh, in the RFL back into the Leeds club. It certainly helps uh, keep the connections there whilst they're also sucking up to the RFL in the uh, in the Super League versus RFL battle. Yeah. Um, well, there's some interesting comments, like really over the last week or so, weren't there, about Gary Heverington and the Leeds rugby, uh, the Yorkshire rugby mafia, and, and things like that that Ian Lennigan came out with that were probably a bit more tongue in cheek than Andrew Chalmers took them to be, the Bradford Bulls coach, but uh, the sorry, Bradford Bulls chief executive and owner. But yeah, um, there's there's more to come on on the background there. Uh, I just saw a tweet come through actually saying that Chalmers has said something about. They should be put. Bradford should be put into Super League next year, and if they're not, they might pull out the money uh, that they put into the club, which must be worrying for the Bradford fans after they thought that something was going to be solidified and 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 on on solid footing. And for Leeds fans, this is at least a showing of maybe a long term progression strategy by bringing Sinfield in. So maybe that does give the fans some reassurance about the stability of the of this what's going to look like a handover plus Heverington's coming for a bit of a criticism around the uh, the recruitment into the club over the last few years I think Sinfield's going to be a bigger draw for modern day players to try and recruit the better modern day players from, from elsewhere into the lead set up um, I mean he certainly <clears throat> sorry has got that um, you know presence hasn't he and people are going to want to go and play under him so I think probably yes in the same way that, you know, Jamie Peacock has to be a, an attraction for certain players at Rovers. Yeah, um, exactly. And, it, it's, and it's not you know, first... we've got Gaz Ellis and things like that. It does seem to be very much the way now, doesn't it? You you find um, a high-profile ex-player and use them as the the carrot for people coming to play for you. Yeah, exactly. Just like, you know, Chris, Chris Radlinski does a similar job for Wigan. Um, I'm... Not sure. I'm trying to think who does the jobs elsewhere. There's um, Carl Fitzpatrick, isn't it, who does it at Warrington, I think, as well. So, right, so there's yeah. form. I mean, he wasn't a former Warrington player, but he was a former Super League player. So, um, so yeah, there's play. There's four players all over the show, isn't there? That are kind of in those roles that yeah that that might that that it's it's good that they're getting into those roles. It probably helps with um, the players coming in that there's someone signing them who understands but with Kevin Sinfield it is a big draw card name okay let's move on to some of the other news stories uh, do you want to start us with what's gone on at Witness yeah. this week yeah Witness have signed ex Wigan centre Anthony Gelling on a two year contract for the start of the 2019 season the 27 year old Auckland born Cook Islands International will move back to England from New Zealand Warriors where he's been playing since leaving Wigan at the start of 2018 what do you make of that then? Well, I, 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 I'm well publicised as loving Anthony Gellin, man of the people and all of those things. I'm quite sad that he's not coming back to the Wigan Warriors, really, because he's yeah. an entertaining player. Um, and it's not like we've got a great depth of centres right now and looking like our player who's played right centre most of this season, who isn't really a centre anyway, won't be at the club next year um, in John Bateman. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, I would have thought if we could have squeezed him in, that would have been a good move for us. I'm happy for him, though, that he's got a, a new contract somewhere. And uh, I think it's good to have a, another character back in Super League. So I'll try yeah. and positive and think about having the character back in Super League rather than disappointed. One, that it didn't really work out for him back in the NRL. And two, that he's not coming back to the Wigan Warriors. It's, um, it's a brave move for him, though, isn't it, to have signed for Witness already, not knowing what the future of witness is. And I, we spoke about this on TV last week and I sort of 
think Anthony Gellin's the type of character who wouldn't like back out of a 